Uh, thank you. And of course, you all know why we're here. You've seen it lots of times. The question being, can somebody in Oakville make a difference? Uh, I got to be honest, I was hoping that the, the comment would be, can somebody in Oakville make a good chicken shawarma? Because uh, <laughs> I haven't found that yet, and I, and I love it. But uh, Of course, the short answer, can somebody in Oakville make a difference and change the world? The short answer is yes. But apparently, they want a long answer. So I'm going to talk a little bit about creativity and the concept of teaching creativity, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, you're all familiar with uh, the concept or the slogan, thinking outside the box. It became very popular in the early 70s, late 60s, actually. John Adair introduced that phrase in 1969 um, with uh, the nine-dot puzzle. Do you all know the nine-dot puzzle? I'm sure you, you do. And so I, I'm not using technology for a couple of reasons that I'll allude to later. The nine-dot puzzle is uh, connecting these nine dots in four straight lines without lifting your pen off the paper. It's a puzzle that was used first actually introduced in 1914 in an encyclopedia of puzzles, uh, but became very popular uh, with the Disney culture and with, uh, with educators also. It became sort of a catchphrase, much touted, little really used. Uh, of course, the, the, the solution to the problem is you have to think outside the box, is where the term came from. So to connect them, you have to not just stay within the nine dots, but you have to go outside the box. So it's a, it's a puzzle that became very popular because of the concept of creativity. And, and, and uh, I've developed over the years, and I taught high school for years. Um, I'm, a, I'm an actor, I'm a writer. Uh, I was doing that while I was teaching at White Oak Secondary School, uh, and, and now I'm here running the Performing Arts Preparation Program at Sheridan College. Um, the concept of teaching creativity is always something interesting to me. So, and I've done very, a, a series of lectures on creativity over the years. Uh, I've developed my own, <laughs> my own acronym for teaching creativity. It's called the P approach, which is why we don't have any visuals. Um, <laughs> Actually, it's P-E-A with a capital A. So you can think that when we're going through this. P-E-A with a capital A. First one, P, promote. Promote creativity. Well, and there's lots, there's, there's lots of sources on the internet and books about how you can use creativity in a classroom or promote it. Or, or, or uh, actually, um, the national curriculum in the UK has a whole um, pamphlet on how to spot creativity. And it goes through a list of things that you can spot creativity from students. Uh, I, I sort of differ from that in that here's how I spot creativity is, uh, can they blink? Can they talk? Are they human beings? And my whole approach is that every single student can be creative. We've had that shout out. Everyone's aware of uh, Ken Robinson's wonderful TED talk about how schools uh, stifle creativity. He's not wrong. And he talks about the promotion of creativity in the arts and how the art subjects are the lowest on the scale. They should be higher up. I go a little bit further, and I think that creativity should not be limited to the arts. Creativity should be thriving in a science class, or an English class, dare I say, in a math class. And I, I don't mean we want to create a creative accountants, but there's things within the math and the formulas that, that, are, that are really interesting. It's the approach to it that can draw students in, make them really, really value what they're learning just by allowing some creativity. So, so the first one, promote. The first way to promote creativity is, is to model it. Don't be afraid to do things a little bit different, a little bit different than you're told. And, and in some great talks today, but we can't be too didactic with what teachers should do because there's so many different approaches that work and depending on the individual. Just as there's so many different things that work in real life, depending on the individual. So we can't dismiss the concept of the individual, and, and you as an individual teacher, or a parent, or a manager, or a coworker, you can promote creativity by modeling it. You know, we're always afraid of, uh, of uh, the people who are gonna reject us. Um, there, there's a great, I, I just took my students to a great play um, a couple days ago called, uh, title of the show, and one of the titles of the song is, uh, of, of the song of the show is, um, I'd rather, people, I'd rather be nine people's favorite thing than a hundred people's ninth favorite thing. 
And I can't, we can't be afraid of that. Years ago, before I started teaching, back in, uh, I won't even say, but I went to a workshop a long time ago, and uh, the teacher, or the instructor, facil facilitator of the uh, event, talked to us about, um, we're always afraid of the rejection. We're always afraid of the ones we don't reach in students. And then he, <laughs> then he said, we've got to remember that uh, even Jesus only got through to 11 out of 12. So, you know, <laughs> that's not bad if we can get through to 11 out of 12. Right? So we can't be afraid of that. We can't be afraid of uh, not being 100 people's ninth favorite thing if we are nine people's favorite thing. So model it. That's a promote creativity. Uh, the second letter uh, in the P, P, A, as I said, encourage. Encourage it. And how do you encourage it mostly? By allowing students to ask questions. Again, how do you model that? By asking them questions. But you have to allow for questions and, and promote that and encourage it. Um, years ago, when my son was in junior kindergarten, um, they had circle time, which is, I don't know if they still have it or not, but my son is now 18 and six foot four and, and eats an awful lot. <laughs> but at one, once upon a time, he was a very cute four-year-old. And at circle time, it, it was... Every student took turns being the leader of circle time, and they brought in something that they shared with the rest of the class. Uh, my student, my, my, my son, wanted to bring in his um, dinosaur costume. It was around thanks, uh, sorry, uh, Halloween, uh, in between Thanksgiving and Halloween, and my wife had made him a, 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 a dinosaur costume. Talk about creativity. She took this hideous green curtain and made it into a, a hideous <laughs> dinosaur costume. <laughs> but my son loved it, and he wanted to take that and dress up as the dinosaur for circle time. And uh, I went in to watch, because the parents were allowed to come in if it was your son's turn to be the leader of, cir of the circle time. So I went in, and uh, uh, he talked about the costume, told a little bit about it, what he was going to do with it, and talked about dinosaurs a little bit. And then they allow for questions from the circle and the rest of the students of all the junior kindergarten students. And other questions. Every single student stuck up their hand. So she came to the first student, who was Wyeth. Uh, these uh, kids are still friends with my son, by the way. Uh, and Wyeth had a question. She said, OK, Wyeth, what's your question? And he said, uh, what if a dinosaur ate a pig? And first of all, I was in hysterics laughing because I thought this was one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Uh, two, it tied right in with the whole idea of what and how you identify creativity by, by these types of questions, the what if question. So I thought it was a great teaching opportunity. Well, pigs didn't live on the planet at the same time as dinosaurs. A lot of dinosaurs were vegetarian. You, you could have gone on and on and on with a good teaching lesson there. But she reprimanded it and reprimanded me because I was laughing <laughs> at the question because I thought it was so great, but she reprimanded Then she went to the next student, who was Jerry. And, uh, and Jerry said, well, what if a pig ate a dinosaur? <laughs> and I thought, again, brilliant, but I almost fell out of my chair laughing. So we all got reprimanded and uh, you know, sent on our way home. But there's where it starts because uh, you know, I, I recently... Um, had a, an issue with my son in his high school where he said, Dan, I'm having problems with the chemistry teacher. Why? Well, well she says I asked too many questions. <laughs> so I went in and I, I, I took the blame because I told him, make sure you ask lots of questions. If you don't know something, ask it. So I went and I said, is he being disruptive? Well, yes, it's disruptive. Are his questions not on tap? Are they, are they, oh, no, no, they're good questions, but there's too many of them, and it takes too much time. And we don't have time to answer these questions. I just want him to do them. So uh, as a strong, strong promoter of public education, I did allow my son to take chemistry from a private school on Saturdays. He took it uh, after the first Saturday. He came home. He ended up getting 90%, by the way. After the first Saturday, and mind you, it was a six-hour class, he said, Dad, I've learned more about chemistry than I have about science in all my other years. 
well, what's the difference? He goes, well, smaller classes, I got to talk to the teacher. But every time I asked a question, the teacher applauded and, and thanked me for wanting to learn. So encourage students to ask questions. It's really important to promote and encourage, right? Something that it's so easy, but we forget that. Just questions. Allow for questions to be asked. And the third one, and this is the PE, this is the capital A. Uh, and here's the secret, by the way, to teaching creativity. Just allow it. Just allow it. You can't teach creativity, really. You can promote it. You can encourage it. But most importantly, you have to allow it. You have to allow students to take a different approach to something. You have to allow a student to come up with an alternative assignment if he wants to, if it's because that's what he's going to be passionate about. And you know, uh, the two things that, that uh, it was wonderful uh, talk just recently. All the talks have been terrific, by the way, every single one of them. The one uh, just recently, uh, fabulous about the 21st century teacher. But what I find missing is the most important things in my mind, and that is uh, be passionate about what you're teaching. That's what a 21st century or 20th century or 19th century or 28th century teacher has to be is passionate about what they're teaching. And allow students to become passionate about what they're learning. And that happens by allowing creativity. Allowing them to think outside the box. Because that's where solutions come from. Solutions don't come from answers. They start with the questions. So we have to allow creativity. And uh, that is it. I'm done. Thank you.